Chapter 1 Molds and Equations Part 2 If you haven't watched Part 1, pause the video, go to the link in the description, watch Part 1, and then come back. Without further ado, let's start. The targets are calculate empirical and molecular formula using combustion data or composition by mass, write and construct balanced equations. Organic compounds have to be very pure to calculate its empirical formula. So, scientists use chromatography to pure such compounds before carrying out formula analysis. So, let's start. Like for example, if we want to know the empirical formula of magnesium oxide, let's say for example that we burn 0.486 grams of magnesium in excess oxygen. We will get 0.806 grams of magnesium oxide and this means that only 0.320 grams of oxygen have been reacted. The atomic mass of magnesium is 24.3 and that of oxygen is 16. From this we can say that one mole of magnesium is 24.3 grams heavy and therefore 0 0.486 grams of magnesium is 0.486 over 24.3 and that is 0.02 moles. In a similar way, 0 0.320 uh, grams of oxygen is 0 0.320 over 16 and that is 0 0.02 moles. So the ratio of magnesium to oxygen is 0 0.02 ratio 0 0.02 and therefore 1 ratio 1, which means that the empirical formula of magnesium oxide is MgO. To summarize that, let's find the empirical formula of uh, phosphorus oxide using simple four steps. Step 1, note the mass of each element. And step 2 is divide by atomic masses. Step 3 is to divide by the lowest figure. And finally, step 4 is to obtain the lowest whole number ratio to get empirical formula. And this means that we don't want decimal places. But sometimes the masses of elements reacted are not in the data given, instead the percentage by mass is given. In order to tackle this problem, we have to understand first what is the percentage by mass, or the percentage composition by mass. The, the percentage by mass is equal to the atomic mass multiplied by the number of moles of particular element in a compound, divided by the molar mass of, the, of that compound multiplied by 100. So for example, we want to find by the percentage by mass of carbon in ethanol, and this is simply the mass of carbon over the total mass multiplied by 100. Therefore, it is 12 multiplied by 2 over 46 multiplied by 100, which is 52.2%. To find the empirical formula of a compound using percentage by mass, we simply treat percentage by mass of each element as the actual mass. So for example, we want to find the empirical formula of a compound of carbon and hydrogen, which contain 85.7% carbon and 14.3% hydrogen. First, let's suppose that we have 100 grams of that compound. Then obviously, 85.7 grams of carbon is reacted to 14.3 grams of hydrogen. Then we follow the four steps we already know. Step 4 is not included as we don't have any decimal points at the end. To find the molecular formula of a compound, we follow very simple steps. Step, step 1 is to find the empirical formula mass. Step 2 is to divide the relative molecular mass by the empirical formula mass. And finally, step 3, which is to multiply the number of atoms in the empirical formula by the number in step 2. So, to find the molecular formula of hydrogen peroxide, which has got a, ma a molecular mass of 34, we firstly find the empirical formula mass, which in this case is 16 plus 1, and that is 17. Then we divide the molecular mass by 17 to get 2. And finally, we multiply this 2 by the number of atoms in hydrogen peroxide. This gives H2O2, the molecular formula. Our next step is to understand how to write and construct balanced equations. And honestly, it is one of the easiest things in chemistry. To begin with, you have to keep in mind that the electronic structure of the individual elements 
in a compound determines the formula of a compound. And we can find the formula of an ionic compound by knowing the charges of the reacted ions. So if we want to find the formula of magnesium or chloride, we have to figure out the charges of the ions present. That is, magnesium 2 positive and chloride negative. So we need two chlorine ions per one magnesium ion to reach electrical neutrality, giving us the formula MgCl2. But there is a different method to find the formula of a covalent compound, because in covalent compounds elements share electrons to achieve the stable electronic configuration of a noble gas. Metals don't form covalent bonds because most metals because most metal atoms has one, two or three excess electrons in their outermost shell. So it is difficult to share five, six or seven electrons with other atoms. And we simply find the formula of a covalent compound by knowing how many electrons each element have to share to reach the noble gas state. You might find it less complicated if we took the covalent compound H2O under consideration. Hydrogen has got one electron in the outermost shell but two is needed to reach the noble gas state. And oxygen has got six electrons in the outermost shell, therefore oxygen shares two electrons with two hydrogen atoms giving the formula H2O. Now it's just about how to form a chemical equation and how to balance one. The structure of an equation depends on the substances reacting. So if a metal reacts with a non-metal to form a compound, it would be an ionic compound. And that's just one example. So if sodium reacts with chlorine to form the ionic compound sodium chloride, the chemical equation would be like this. Sodium plus chlorine gives sodium chloride. Notice how the product is named. The metal is written first and then the non-metal with, the, with its ending changed to "-ied". And this works when a symbol metal ion reacts with a symbol non-metal ion. A common difference in naming compound ions is that the oxygen containing ion ending is changed to "-ate", instead of "-ied". An example is calcium plus sulfate gives uh, calcium sulfate. Balancing Chemical Equations Atoms can't be created or destroyed. This means that in a chemical equation there must be the same number of each type of atoms on the right side as there is on the left side. Balancing a an equation is easier when it is a symbol equation, as a symbol equation is a shortened way of describing a chemical reaction and it shows the number of and type of the atoms in the reaction. In order to balance a chemical equation you can simply follow four simple steps. Step 1. Write down the formulae of all the reactants and products. Step 2. Count the number of atoms of each reactant and product. Step 3. Balance one of the atoms by placing a number in front of one of the reactants or products. Uh, remember that the number in front multiplies everything in the formula. Step 4 and the final step is keep balancing in this way until all the atoms are balanced. To make this much more easier for you to understand, let's follow a worked example. So for example, we want to balance an equation for the reaction of iron 3 oxide with carbon monoxide to form iron and carbon dioxide. We first write the formula that is iron 3 oxide plus carbon monoxide gives iron plus carbon dioxide. Then we count the number of atoms. This is 2 iron atoms plus 3 oxygen atoms and 1 carbon atom plus 1 oxygen atom on the reactant side and 1 iron plus 1 carbon and 1 oxygen atom on the product side. Then we balance the iron like this and finally we, ba we balance the oxygen to get the equation completely balanced. Using state symbol in an equation is sometimes very useful and we simply do this by placing the state of the formula after each reactant and product. We use S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, and AQ for aqueous. If you like the content, press the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, inquiries, or suggestions, send me an email. My email is in the description down below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. Also, don't forget to study and that education is light.